uh about 20 minutes late but we are ready to go so welcome to the game everybody we're gonna yay st we both yay <laughs> we're gonna start with uh thoros thoros you awake in the morning and as you you kind of stretch and well, what's the first thing you do as you wake up probably yeah, I can't say John's wife's here. Um, I will wake up, stretch, and, and head downstairs for breakfast. As you go to your door, you notice a piece of paper slid underneath. I will pick it up and look at it. It's signed by Zinn. It reads, After the interaction with the Wizards of Thay. Ray and I are going to leave for a day or two. We'll meet you back here as soon as we're back in town. Zinn and Ray. Cool. Well, then I'll head downstairs for breakfast. As you head down the stairs, um, the, the wafting smell of... Um, sausages and hash browns permeate the area uh do you guys uh, sorry uh junto and relira do you guys see the map or is it black to you yeah we can see the map okay uh, i'm gonna pull you guys in at a table over here for the moment You come down and uh, you can see that the place, as usual, is busy. Um, breakfast is being served. Um, plenty of people are already drinking. It is a tavern, after all. And Dernan is behind the counter uh, with um, Kugra sitting there, already eating breakfast. Cool, and I guess I'll join Kugra. As you arrive... Ah! Morning, Thoros! You sleep well? Well enough. We've got work to attend to, I'm sure, but uh, yeah, I slept well. How about you? Ah, uh, well... It was uh, a rough night. Been trying to decide whether I'm gonna stick around or head out now that my oath has been fulfilled. Have I told you about a charity I had up called the Orphans of Thoros? Orphans of Thoros? Just, is is this a thing? No, I'm, I'm just messing with you. It's, it's, it was just a cheap shill to try and get at his gold. Ah, your crafty one. Deep, I feel bad. Well, so what did you decide? I think I'm going to be heading off. Oh, did you get the note from Zinn and Ray? I did. They're, they're off for a couple days. Uh, they could probably use a break. We've been, well, I'm sure they've been pretty hard at it. Uh, if time that I spent with them is any indicator. I. Well, I don't think I'll be here long, but uh, it's curious what plans you got for the day. <laughs> well, uh, I will probably do some basic shopping, practice some skills, maybe look around for something fun to get into. I hear there's a small festival in town. Oh. Uh. What is it a festival of? Don't know. I'll have to explore. Sounds interesting. Heard they're uh, they're doing it around the the main market just north. Well, that'll always be a fun place to go and spend some time. I maybe I'll hang around for the day just to check it out. You know. Well, up to you. You're always welcome to stay or go as you please.
Uh, the two of you sit and eat breakfast. Um, many of the patrons are the same as every other day. However, Thoros, as you look around, you notice a, uh, a couple over uh, across the tavern. There's two people sitting at a table, both eating their breakfast and a breakfast ale. Junto, would you like to describe yourself? Junto is a. Uh... Let me get the exact. <laughs> Junto is about about five foot ten, you know, maybe a little little shorter because he, you know, a little hunched over a little bit. Weighs about one twenty eight. It's a black feline, beautiful with blue eyes and he's about 32 33 so you know upper third of his life bunch of clothes what do you look like what are you wearing anything that'll signify uh you know what's your standing or position or anything like that yeah so junto's um south shore junto's uh He's kind of tattered right now. He looks a little rough for wear. Um, basically, you know, would be not like typical monk garb, but it looks like somebody just ran through it with, you know, tree branches and knives and cut it all up. And uh, I've got like a little limp right now. Um, I'm a good, um, I guess I'm like a good person, you know, like not necessarily bad, but you know, a little troublemaker sometimes. And, um, you know, adept at the open, open palm. Um, and basically I was, you know, in my village and recently was, was attacked and so I fell out of a tree and was in the uh, Dasaran River going upstream to, to get away from my attacker. And um, so that that's all player knowledge, just so you're aware. Oh. Thoros. Bigger. No worries. Yeah, because he hasn't met you yet. He, he's not going to know okay. your backstory. OK, just what I'm looking like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think I think I gave a good enough description. Yeah, for yeah. <laughs> Aces. Um, next to uh, this tabaxi is a little bit of a strange-looking elf. Relira, would you like to describe yourself? Um, I'm a very, very pale woman who appears to be quite young, perhaps about 22, as, as you look upon her in this plane, with snow white hair and ice blue eyes. Um, and her clothing is in perfect condition. Um, and she seems to be, um, to appear at peace and yet to be somewhat brooding um, and perhaps prepared for a, a negative unknown to come in, in a little darkness in her, in her eyes. And what kind of garb are you wearing currently? Uh, I am wearing mostly black clothing uh, with some streaks of a bright, bright purple, and it's in uh, perfect condition. And I'm holding a, an instrument of some sort and perhaps a, a rapier. <laughs> These two uh, look... A little out of place, considering most of the patronage. 
You've seen elves before, but you've never seen one quite like this. And even the, the tabaxis are rather rare, although you know one that has been partial tabaxi. But they both seem to be um, looking around the... The, um, how did I forget the tavern? Um, Yawning Portal Tavern. They seem almost like they're a little bit lost, for lack of a better word. I'll turn to Cougar and say, Cougar, do you ever wonder on the, uh, oddity of life uh, our friends a partial tabaxi and an elf depart and i look across the bar over you and i see another tabaxi and an elf well, what are the odds i mean really in the same bar well seems we're a little short on friends in these parts at the moment we can always go over and introduce ourselves yeah, let's let's go see if they're as friendly as the last Tabaxi and Elf that we knew, and maybe we could have uh, <laughs> quite an interesting party. Aye. Ah, uh, one moment. Darnin! Yes? For your bust ales. Coming up, Kugra. Uh, he, they exchange the money and the four ales. Uh, he hands two to you, Thoros, and he picks up to himself. I let's go see if they're uh, wanting of company. Sure, why not? You notice as Cougar passes his table, he only, he he accidentally steps on the pill and almost trips, uh, spilling a little bit of the beer. Oh, my bad, my bad. As uh, a little bit splashes on one of the patrons, and he continues on. As the other patron um, continues to swear at him. Excuse me. Are these uh, these seats taken? No, no. Go ahead and help yourself. I'm Kugra and this here be Thoros. Um, as you look at uh, these two, you see Kugra is uh, what you would know to be a um, Duergar. Um, typically, they usually have a little bit of evil in their nature, but uh, this one seems rather friendly. He's wearing um, copper armor, and he carries a very nasty-looking copper axe at his hip. Next to him is a very large minotaur. Would you like to describe yourself, Thoros? Sure. So Thoros is obviously a black minotaur with flying red eyes. Uh, stands about seven and a half feet tall, uh, just north of 400 pounds, full muscle, um, wearing a uh, rugged hide loincloth uh, and a leather strap that acts as a holster for a halberd that is strapped across his back. Uh, on his left flank, he has a a glowing red brand with the letters BH. Friend looks pretty intimidating. That he does. I'm Who just a baby. Cougar <laughs> sets the beer uh, down on the, the table and he pushes the two he's got towards you two. I'll slide one beer over to Cougar. Braille. ale. So, uh, don't mind me asking. Probably none of my business, but... Not exactly, uh... The normal patronage around here. I mean, I guess neither am I, but... May I ask, uh... You had any plans in town today?
Cougar sits in silence, awaiting an answer. One sec. <sighs> Ah. Well, is it a... Is it a what? Lauren wants to know, can she just... She, she... The reason I... The reason that... That I was thinking this... That Relier is here is because of a holiday, but, like, I don't know if I... I don't know what time of year it is or what year it is or anything like that, so I don't know if that was okay or not. So... Uh, so if you look down to, um, in your journal, you'll find a folder called player information handouts. Uh, if you go down in that a little bit, you should see one that says calendar and moon cycles, 1549 DR. Uh, current day is the first of, uh, Elisis. Which is midsummer. So, um, yeah, you could be here for the midsummer festival. Cougar says, ah, oh, yeah. You're here for the festival. I didn't even know there was one. I'm not exactly from around these parts either. Uh, this is also my first time in town. I look forward to seeing this festival. Have you two seen it before? Your mic is on, but no sound. Oh, mine? No, Julian. Oh, okay. Mic is on, still no sound. No sound. No sound. Savage, could you perhaps have him muted? No. Nope. He's got an icon. No, he, he he just did that. I think he's trying to fix his shit. Oh, okay. My bad. I think something got fucked up. That happens to all of us.
Hello? Holy fuck. Yay. I, I had to join on my phone. Uh, sorry, boys. It's all, all good. good. All right, because we were trying to talk. <laughs> this, are we... Oh, Maybe you need to turn the music off. Is there sound off? Uh... Hold on. Sounded like he heard you. No, he hears me. Yeah, I can I'm hear you both. To, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to mute while I'm on here. Well, while you're figuring that out, I can express that. This is my third time coming for the festival. It's quite vibrant. And this year I've brought my instrument to seek out the, the festivities and, and feel something. Incredible. What do you play? Uh, how do you pronounce it? The lyre. The lyre. A oh, beautiful instrument. Perhaps you would favor us with a tune. Certainly. Did they hear me? So, mm -hmm. as you, um, you oblige, and you begin to play, roll me a performance. When I go, see, I go here, and I click on performance. Or she to click. Where's performance? Here, click. Did it work? <laughs> <laughs> yep. You a terrible performance. <laughs> As she starts to play, um, it seems that her instrument is very out of tune. Um, a couple of the patrons laugh. Uh, uh, you hear a couple of them, uh, shut up! Oh my god, if you're gonna practice, at least go to your own room, and little pieces of bread and such come flying towards your table. Which guy's for <laughs> the bread? This table. Who walks over and asks, which one of you has a problem, my friend? Uh, give me advantage at, uh, or sorry, <laughs> intimidation at advantage. Hang on one sec, sorry, Logan. Can you hear me? Mm, now I can. You weren't talking before. Uh, yeah, they all kind of like, as you get up and walk over here, Thoros, smoke fucking, um, kind of coming from your nose every time you exhale and your glowing red eyes, they all kind of, um, look down at their meals and everybody points at each other at this table. I'm glad I think we understand each other in future. Keep your criticisms to yourself unless you can do better. As you begin to walk away, you see, um, you, you hear a, another voice. Well, I think I could do better. Matron begins walking over. Uh, I don't think Thoros, you've met him, but Kugra has. No, I haven't. So I'm trying to figure out what's going to go with it. And as he strums his instrument, uh, he comes over and he, he sits down. My dear, um, may I? And he stops playing and he kind of holds his hand out towards your instrument. Will you give him the instrument? Uh, you may play if 
it is the most daring song in your repertoire. Oh, no, no, my dear. I have my own. I'm going to fix yours. Oh, I would be so grateful. He, uh, he, he puts his, uh, his lyre down at his feet and he takes yours. And he kind of tries to do a small chord and with the skill he just showed using his own instrument, uh, you can tell that it is definitely the fault of your instrument. He takes your instrument and he begins to tune it properly. It takes him about two minutes and he says, here, try again. As he passes it back to you. <laughs> if you wish to try again, you may roll me another performance. Much better. As you begin to play, um, the uh, the people over at this table they they just keep their heads down. Um, but a couple of the other patrons actually, as you you finish your um, your small little song, they both uh, th this group over here kind of claps as long as well as this this table down here. Huzzah. See, just not the lack of skill. It was the lack of skill of tuning your instrument. It should be good now. And he smiles and he, uh, he stands up and he says, oh, Kugra, where, where's your other two friends? Ah, uh, they, uh, they left town for uh, a day or two. Some unfortunate uh, circumstances, you see. Ah, uh, well, I do hope to see them again soon. The, uh, their new organization might have another job for them soon. Hopefully I will see them when I get back. And he stands and kind of, like, tips his little, um, Robin Hood-like hat. And he begins to play as he walks away. In fact, he goes directly over to this other table. And start strumming. As he does, uh, the three of you can give me a perception, please. Relira and Thoros. As he's over here playing, suddenly they all seem to be enthralled. You can't hear the words he is quietly singing. But as his song finishes, they each get up, leave three gold each on the table, and promptly head out the door. Meals and drinks unfinished. Matrim scoops up uh, the gold off the table. And walks back over, and without a word, drops six gold on the table in front of you, Relira. Continues to play as he walks away. I don't know who he was, but I like him. As he plays, he looks back over. Matrim three strings, he sings. And continues on. Thoros yells back, Thoros the Red, good to meet you. Kind of does a spin, and as he continues to play, a little bow. As he continues to walk backwards, and he stops at another table. Playing and singing. Ah, so, uh, we're all done our breakfast. Should we, should we go check out the, the festival? Yeah, sure. I don't see why not. 
uh, maybe maybe after one more round of drinks, I'd be be happy to go. Bye. This round's on me. I'll throw us lab back at the bar and order four large ales. Uh, are we talking my size large or your size large, sir? My size large. Thoros, you come back uh, after paying um, three silver. You, sir, have four mega pints in your hands. <laughs> I'll slide them all across the table. <laughs> these uh these mugs are massive. These uh these mugs hold uh nearly a gallon apiece. These are definitely made for people of uh Thoros's side or maybe even ogres. They are absolutely massive. As you guys drink them down, would you like to engage in any conversation while you drink these, or do uh, you guys just want to skip that and head on? I want to ask where Thoros is from. Up north, mostly. A uh, member of a Black Buff tribe. We had some differing opinions with regard to how... Well, let me try and put it in language you'd use. We don't agree on how to fight or who to fight. Uh, so I came here seeking my fortune on my own. Thoros, are you wearing any jewelry? No. Oh, wait, hang on. He might. Let me check, check, his, check his gear. A ring of small mercies and a ring of shadows. You guys notice two rings upon this Minotaur's very large fingers. They're very intricately made. Where'd you, where'd you find those beautiful rings? Well, in part my own doing, I enjoy crafting. I can't enchant them, but I enjoy crafting jewelry. It's a, uh, an unexpected hobby, I guess. I see, I see. I'll, uh, I'll go, I'll show Thoros my, my tattoo. As well as my my boots. Do you like to describe what the tattoo looks like? The tattoo looks like a kind of tribal style dragon hat combination that travels, you know, from from my shoulder all the way down to my wrist where the cat is on the inside of my palm and the dragon is dragon's head is on uh, the top of my hand. Like the tribal. So uh, a question for thematic reasons. Um, since you are a tabaxi and covered with fur, do you keep this spot shaved? I keep it shaved along the line of the tattoo, yeah. At, at first, it's a little difficult to see, but as he kind of turns his arm so you can see it a little better, you can definitely see that the the uh, lines are, are shaved in, and on his dark skin, you can see spots where it's, it's the lines are. And it's uh, it, it's rather intricate.
Very nice. Cougar goes, ah, I got one of them too. And he stands up and he, he bends over and pulls his pants down. And you can see uh, on both his butt cheeks, he's, he's got some, uh, some tribal tattoos himself. Very, very interesting tattoo placement. Ah. Uh, I lost a bet. It's a very detailed tattoo. I, I'm very happy for you, Drew Gar. He, uh, he howls with laughter. Sits back down after he pulls his pants back up. He looks over at uh, Rilera. What about you? You got any special markings and tattoos? I wish it weren't so. I, <laughs> I uh, am fairly covered beneath my garments, but it is for strength and clarity of mind that the pain provides rather than a fashion choice or a bet. Well, I mean, let's see if you got some on your arms. I mean, you ain't got to be pulling your pants down to show, but you got something on your arms. Let's see. Let's compare. Can Rulia somehow, like, sniff at it, snark at him? <laughs> what? She like gets defensive or reacts in some way to scare him or something. She scoffs. Sure, she scoffs. Ah, you ain't no fun. What about scars? You got scars? Surely you've seen some bottle. I think perhaps our friend is indicating that you've seen enough of her body at this point. <laughs> Chase, I'm just asking for an arm. I ain't asking for nothing personal, but I see. Tis fine, tis fine. Rilira gra uh, runs her finger along her rapier. All right, all right, calm down. We're just having some fun. And he finishes up the, the last of his mega pint. Um, I need... Everybody but Thoros to give me a con save, please. You are handling your liquor remarkably well, um, Rilira. Although Junto and um and Kugra both Kugra. Kugra both seem to uh have a little bit of a buzz going as he, he finishes it off and wipes his uh wipes his mouth on the back of his hand. So shall we see what this festival's all about? I'm game. Yeah, let's go. All right. Um, as you uh, you all stand up and uh, go to leave the um, the table, um, both Kugra and Junto kind of do a a little bit of a stumble, not a bad one, just a little bit, as they stand up, and you guys head out into the city. As you guys exit, you find all eyes are on you. Um, tabaxi isn't too rare. A little rare, but, I mean, it's water deep. However, the Minotaur, the Durgar, and um, the very strange elf 
seems to be uh, drawing a lot of attention. As you guys walk through the city, uh, a lot of this area down here, because uh, you guys are at C48 right now, a lot of this area seems to be a little bit empty. Um, however, as you head north towards the market, the uh, the crowds seem to get thicker and thicker. However, you guys are able to make your way um, pretty easily as nobody really wants to get between, um, get in the path of a minotaur. Did you guys head up? You guys can drag yourselves up here. So, uh, Ralira, how you do that is you go to your journal and you just click and drag your character name over to the, the spot and it'll drag you into the field. Yep, she got it. She did it quick. All right. So, as you guys get near the, uh, the festival, um, Shouting gets louder and louder. You see uh, streamers and little tiny um, party-like flags hanging up um, across the alleys and the streets. And as you get into this area, it is a jumble of people. Um, there are plenty of shops still open, and uh, there are plenty of food vendors all over as well. Uh, in the center of the market seems to be a extremely large um, area that has been set aside for, for dancing, as minstrels and bards play their instruments and sing songs. It's a large dance going on in the middle. Um... Almost everybody in the area has a um, a mug of some sort in their hand, whether it be um, ale or the the kids have uh, some some juice. Children run to and for uh, to and fro with um, stains along their lips and and laughing and shouting. There also seems to be some games. What would you all like to do first? Well, throw us a look for another bar. Um, there is easily a uh, several stands around that have uh, that are selling alcohol. Of all so, kinds. So Ralira was saying that she's she's here not to like be with people, but she's looking to like feed off of the emotions of the people at the festival. Okay. So as Thoros looks for a uh, alcohol stand, what does this look like, Ralira? Ralira. Her eyes scan across the the crowd, uh, darting about, seeking something. And then they land in one particular direction, and she appears to be drawn towards it. So the most emotionally charged area would probably be the dance floor. It's the dance floor. Now, how how do you do this uh, feeding off the emotions? Do you kind of like wander through the dance floor and just feel the emotions around you? Or... Uh, Ralira, uh walks... Uh, and, or no, she she can teleport 30 feet, I believe, or something like that. So she she teleports and appears 
on the dance floor in the center of the of the hype and festivities and stands there with her arms out <laughs> towards the surroundings <laughs> receiving the the <laughs> um the 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 joy and abandon of the passersby as they groove. <laughs> That's fucking great. Yeah, as uh, Thoris is looking around for an alcohol stand, all of a sudden he looks back and Relier is just fucking gone. Uh, Cougar's like, the oh, fuck? Where'd she go? And, um, uh, I'll give, uh, to Thoros and, uh, Junto a perception check. Junto is, you know, he's he, he's been with uh, Relier a little while, so he he knows that uh, you know she, she kind of just teleports every now and then. Um, but Thoros notices her as he's the tallest, and he stands far above everybody else in the crowd. Thoros, oh. you, you see her in like the center of the dancing area. Well, already then. Yeah, she she tends to do that from time to time. I don't quite get it yet, but it makes her feel good, I think. Doesn't seem to be hurting anybody. I've got no issue. That's kind of how I felt about it. It scared exactly. me the first couple times. Rilira, as you teleport into the middle of this group, um, only one or two people really seem to notice that you just appeared out of nowhere. Um, everybody else doesn't really take notice and, you know, you just kind of like stand there with your arms out and the charge of emotion, um, it's almost overpowering. You feel alive, which is something that you are really not accustomed to from where you come, uh, where you come from. And you guys watch as she does this, and you see the smile spread across her face, and she's not really dancing, but she's kind of like smiling and just like almost just shifting from side to side and swaying with the music. But again, not really dancing, just feeling the charge of the area. And then Thoros, all of a sudden you hear, Ale! Beer! Oh. Wine, finest in the city. And then you hear somebody else yell out, Bullshit, I've got the finest in the city. No, I've got the finest in the city. <clears throat> Excuse me, that hurt. Uh, a little gnome voice pipes up. Sounds like this calls for a taste test. Doris will walk over to the first vendor. You approach, and you see a halfling. Ah, oh, you're a big one! You, you, you need some, some libations, sir? Please. All right, we got ale, we got mead, we got beer, we've got wine, uh, we even have some real strong spirits. Let's go with a nice large ale I'm facing myself. Sorry, say that again? Let's go with a nice large ale. I'm facing myself. Very well. And uh, as he begins to pour, what are you doing, Junto? Bathroom. Mm. Didn't see that. Fair enough. Um, how many uh, how many ales are you getting? You just getting one? Nah, I'll get uh, four total. All right, four total. Well, that's uh, it's going to be one silver, two copper, please. I'll give him two silver and keep the change. Thank you kindly, big guy. And uh, he pours out um, four ales. These mugs are a little smaller than what you're used to. You, basically, you can get two of your fingers in um, in the handle because of your size. Got it. I'll walk back to the party. I'll, I'll not bother 
earlier because she seems like she's occupied, but I'll, I'll go back to the party and uh, offer them their drinks if they'd care for them. Cougar will take one. And I'm assuming Junto will take it. I think he'll take it. He's in the bathroom. Yeah. So, Relira, how long are you uh, absorbing the emotions on the dance floor? You gonna stay there a while? I think I'm about done. As Relira absorbs uh, the last of the emotions that she's after for the moment, you guys can see her kind of put her arms down as the, the song ends, and she seems... A large smile has spread across her face, and as she rejoins the group, you can see small beads of sweat on her forehead. Thoros reaches out a uh, a hand with an ale towards you. Ale makes everything better. Not in my experience. More for me. Thank you. Thoris will go after one in each hand. Double fist, as I always say. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cougar is a little confused about what exactly you were doing there, um, earlier. He, he's going to ask, uh, what is that you were doing? You weren't really dancing, but something was happening. Cannot hear her. Uh, I'm thinking. <laughs> um. I was I was just uh, walking off in the distance. I don't know what you're referring to. Well, what was that dancing where you come from? <laughs> Let's turn and say it wasn't me. Relira um, evades the question. Thoros is going to look at Cooper and say, Elves, am I right? What can you do, you know? You thought you saw something, but you didn't. There you go. He pauses for a moment. Oi! You're a Shadra Kai, aren't you? <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't mean to press, it's just... You're an interesting one. I've, I've, that's right. I, I've, I've come from the fell. Shh. I wouldn't be saying that too loudly. <laughs> Much like me, your kind aren't really, uh, overly welcomed on the material plane. In fact, I think about the only one of us here that's, uh, Really welcome. Probably around here might be uh, the cot one here, as he kind of motions towards Junto. I'll just lick my paws. Simple ones that are enjoyed. Well, why don't we see what else this festival has to offer? Yeah, I'm excited to go look around. Sure. I wonder what games there are. Give me one sec. I gotta find a um, PDF I have.
Son of a bitch. Give me a moment. I accidentally opened it in Adobe, and Adobe does not work for shit anymore. It, would, it wouldn't be a session without you saying, hold on a minute, son of a bitch. True story. You gotta get the full experience. Yeah, otherwise Lauren will be confused when it does happen, the next section. If I'm not saying that at least two or three times, if I'm not saying that at least two or three times a session, it's not a fucking session. All right, so. As you guys kind of uh, take a look around, you see um, several um, games. Let's see, first. You see small signs um, standing up next to different... Um, Booths. Each one has a different name. You see a sign that says Wizard's Tower. You see one that says Guess the Door. Uh, you see one that says Rodeo. You also see one that says the Gnome Flinger Field Test. That one sounds fun. Doesn't it? <laughs> Is that the one you're trying to check out first? <laughs> I'm in. We're all in, I think. Oh, yeah. All right. As you get in line for this one, it takes about 10 minutes to get to the front. But as your group gets to the front, you see a small gnome there, uh, a little tuft of gray hair on each side of his head. Um, no hair on the top, no hair on the back. Hi! Welcome! You, uh, you want to test out the gnome flinger? Do we get to fling gnomes? Uh, you know what? Hold, hold on a second. He goes and he gets like a, uh, what can only be described uh, nowadays would be a measuring tape, and he's like, "Please, uh, please stand on this real quick." As he uh, he he pulls out a, a long piece of it and has you step on one end, and he's like trying to reach your head, and he's like, "Ah, I'm sorry. Could you?" kind of take this and mark where you know the the top of your head is on this for me please i didn't want to cut my friend off and throws a look at jinto and, and kind of gesture towards the, the little known guy well i'm just making sure that uh this thing is actually going to be able to hold and you know fling you you're you're, you're a little large wait i thought we flung the gnomes no 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 it's called the gnome flinger because I'm a gnome and I made it. You see this uh, behind him. You can see this. Uh, what looks almost like a um, a slingshot. However, it's got a seat attached to it. Uh, the seat is might be a little tight for you. Can I jump in? And it before, seems anybody, before anybody can respond, Relira is already in the seat. There is a lever next to you, but as he's trying to measure Thoros, wait, 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 wait! No, no, don't, don't touch anything. Before you can even do it, first off, it's too silver to ride. Secondly, you need this. And he pulls out what almost looks like a backpack. With several extra straps attached to it. And that is... Well, this is so you don't go splat 
on your descent. I'll go without. I, 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 I really suggest you don't do that. <laughs> Which is that? Is that Blair? Is that like the character? It's the character. I suggest you trust me. Um. Oh. Okay. Hope you got a backup ready, because goddamn. Um. He says. Well, I, I can't. It's it's against safety protocols, and I'm not trying to get arrested when you hit the ground and your brains splatter all over everybody in the alley. Taurus reaches over and grabs the lever and yanks it. Oh, trust. Oh, <laughs> no, no. As <laughs> Jesus, fuck. Ralira, you go flying through the air. You hear a thunk as suddenly your chair gets vaulted at a uh, like 70 degree angle up into the air. You fly. I want you to roll me a D200, please. So to do that, in chat, you do slash R space D200 and hit enter. Oh, no. So, uh, it's right in this alley, and it is aimed south along Warrior's Way. Um, as you zip and you get launched from this, you are going 91 feet in the air, and... As you hit that 91 feet, you start to descend. The ground is coming up quickly. What do you do? Second. All right, well, you decide. I'm going to uh, give me, like, 30 seconds. I think I may have just done a horrible thing. Ralira takes out an object. Ralira takes out the immovable rod and holds on tight. Plants it in the air. In, <laughs> in the air? No, on a tree? There is no tree. Plants it is a air. straight shot through the alleyway. It doesn't need to touch a tree. It no, it doesn't. Be... Uh, you just got to hit the button and it stops dead where it is. Where in your descent are you pressing the button? Uh, when she is about 30 feet above ground. Okay. Now you understand the force at which you are launching and then the force that's going to be required for you to stop dead and hold on to this thing in your descent, right? Idea. <laughs> this is a bad idea. Oh, this was a horrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. So I thought you could fly. Um Yeah, you pull out the immovable rod and you wait until you're about 30 feet from the ground. You hit the button and you attempt to hold on. 
I need a strength saving throw. <laughs> Do you have anything to counter this? She's trying to see if she can use her blessings of the Raven Queen. As a bonus action. <laughs> okay. Um. Yes. So as... You hit this button, it stops dead, and uh, unfortunately, your hand slips off as this rod stays in the air. You start to tumble, and then you use your Blessing of the Raven Queen to boom, and you just disappear and reappear on the ground, laying flat on your back. She said lit. <laughs> nice. The plan worked. Your immovable rod, however, is now 30 feet in the air. She, wait, what? Her immovable rod is 30 feet in the air. Oh, uh, yeah. As gonna... you, you suddenly, uh, as people watch you flying above their head and you hit this button, start to fall, and then as... Uh, reactively you use your uh your ability to then teleport yourself directly to the ground and you stand up looking like a ghost at first people are cheering and then they see you all translucent as you stand up and look around and people in the street start screaming thinking there is some sort of specter loose in town everybody starts to scatter from this area and you are about here at this point uh the thing launched from basically this corner um People start to scramble and scream. Uh, you guys hear the uh, hear town guards trying to get through the crowd. What's going on? Is that a ghost? Um, suddenly you begin to lose your translucentness uh, since it only lasts until the about six seconds. So you, you suddenly become um, um, opaque once again. And as the, the, the guards surround you, and at first they thought they saw a ghost, and now it seems that you are corporeal again. They seem very confused. What, what's going on here? And you hear one of the little kids go, G -g 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 Ghost! And he points at you. Really, Ira? They all look towards you with their shields and their spears drawn. And when they realize that you are, once again, corporeal. Just because she's extremely pasty white does not mean she's a ghost, boy. They're all kept at the City of the Dead. You know this. But, but, but... No buts, child. Run along. Enjoy the festival. Don't waste the city guard time. And they all seem to relax. Uh, however, the people in the area still seem to be afraid of you. Giving you a very wide berth, Relira. Relira wipes the single bead of sweat from her forehead and softly smiles. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, <laughs> back at the rest of the group, the gnome is freaking out. That's it! No more of you! Get, get, get out of here! Get out of here! As he kind of like sits there kicking dust at you. You're Careful, no gnome. Fun. We might redefine gnome tossing. Behave, little one. <laughs> Intimidation at advantage? 
Oh, I wasn't trying to intimidate, but okay. Do you have your? Do you remember the uh, the effect of your yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, your your thing? Um. You were you endangered right. lives, Thoros. Or er, sorry, he doesn't know your name. You endangered life, Minotaur. You're lucky I don't call the guards. Get out of here. She's fine. Calm yourself. Thoros will walk away laughing. Yeah, um, Thoros, from your vantage point, you actually do not know that she is fine. You cannot oh, see I don't? her. Okay. No, no, she she she's over ninety one feet away at the moment. She had a plan. I'm sure she's fine. You worry too much. I'm booking it over to her. Valera's uh, down here. Thoros is walking, but briskly. He's confident she has a plan. God, she's like... <laughs> actually okay. As, as uh, you guys walk over, Cougar is, uh, downs his beer, and then he tries to, to run to catch up. Um, his legs are not carrying him very well. He's uh, He's a little stumbly. And as you guys cut through the crowd, um, you see that Relier is walking back uh, with a big smile on her face. Um, though you notice that everybody in the area seems a little possibly scared of her. Was it fun? Okay, but I think it might be time to move a little bit. Are we forgetting anything? What you mean we forgetting anything? Cougar kind of slurs. There, uh... Sh should I listen to me? She cut out. A movable rock. My movable rod is about 30 feet upwards. Cougar looks up. And you can see it just sitting there. 30 feet up in the air. Not attached to anything, just sitting there in the air. Ah. Uh, what's that doing up there? It was part of a failed plan, but I'm ready to move along now. <laughs> Ralira takes out her, um, what's it called? Thin rope. Also yeah, you keep cutting out. So Ralira wants to have Thoros, you know, throw her while she's trying to hook her hempen rope around the rod so that she can climb up. Oh, there's an easier way? I think you have to touch the button. You do, yes. There's an easier way. That. Thoros will fly up and touch the button and bring it back down. Thoros can fly? Thoros has winged boots. Thoros was made by a munchkin. Oh. Thoros was made by a munchkin? Is that what he just said? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get out of here. Of course, the whole joke being Red Bull gives you wings to dunch. <laughs> so Thoros like will fly up, grab the rod and push the button and come back down uh, and hand the rod to uh, to Rilera and say that was awesome that was freaking awesome holy fuck um, so on, on your way up 
uh the the crowd that seems already a little wary of of this group um watches as this uh what was it eight foot tall minotaur no you made me cap it at seven and a half seven and a half this seven and a half foot minotaur just with glowing red eyes suddenly fly upwards straight up um yeah more people start scrambling from the area <laughs> Thoros gets up there, he hits the button and floats back down to the ground and hands her the immovable rod. Nobody's really there, there's a few people screaming and yelling, but well, most of the people are are running away. <laughs> uh, thank you. What was it you said you're called? Thoros. Thoros. A pleasure. Pleasure to meet you, man. Damn, been hanging out for like two hours at this point. Didn't even remember your name. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm not exactly a people person. <laughs> all good. Cougar says, so... Should we try out some of these other games? You think they're gonna let us? Oh, they'll let us. <laughs> he says as uh, he exhales from his nose and a bunch of smoke floats out. Alright, then yeah, let's get in. Back to the games we go. I'm curious what the rodeo's about. Want to check out the rodeo? Hell yeah. Never seen one from this perspective before. So off to the side over here. Um, there seems to be a ram ramshackle wooden circle that has been set up. In the center, a huge white stallion bucks and jumps, throwing a screaming man off its back into the dirt. The crowd laughs and cheers um, as a person, several people dressed as uh, what seems to be clowns uh, charge in and try to distract the stallion. Uh, the man kind of stands up and, and limps off. You can see his leg is twisted the wrong way. But he does go and sit down um, and a cleric what seems to be a cleric walks over and places a hand on his leg and you can see the leg twist back into the proper position. The man gives a shout as uh, a kind of a radiant glow grows from uh, between the cleric's hand and the man's leg. And then you see the man a the cleric um you can't see what he actually gives the cleric, but he definitely drops something into the cleric's hand. Is there someone that seems to be in charge of this game? Uh, yes. In fact, as, uh, as the man is getting healed, you hear somebody uh, come out and kind of grab the reins of this war horse. And as soon as this man comes out, the war horse stops bucking and follows the man where he pulls him back into the center of the ring. Well, who's next? Uh, this man in uh, what looks to be a cowboy hat and chaps uh, shouts. Anybody else to test their medal against the greatest stallion in the world? I'll give it a go. He looks at your sheer size. Uh, God. Wow, you're uh, you're a big one. Or not? I don't want to hurt your horse. He thinks for a moment. Give me one moment. I have another one for uh, for biggins such as yourself. And he takes this horse off to the side, and uh, you see him hand the reins to somebody, and. Then they bring out 
a large black stallion. From head to feet, uh, or head to hooves, I guess. This particular horse stands about 11 feet. Nice. This one does not obey his owner worth a damn. Even as he's trying to bring it out into the field, it's kind of like jerking the reins left and right and trying to rear up a little bit. In fact, for a moment, it looks like the man's about to be brought right off his feet. Well, you think that, uh, you think you can hold on, huh? I'll sure try. All right, very well. What's your name? Thoros. Everybody, meet Thoros. The one who thinks he's going to be the next champion of the rodeo. Um, everybody, uh, half the people kind of clap, half kind of like you can hear whispers among the crowd. Feel free to take your bets. The bookies are walking around. All around you. You'll find them pretty easily. You see hordes of people flock to the bookies. Do either of you wish to place bets? Who are not in the rodeo? Hello. Place. I would like to place hundred gold. One hundred gold on Thoros or the horse. Thoros. Bet on the horse. Oh, are you fixing this? Is that what this is? You fixing this, Thoros? Not at all. But when was the last time you saw? When was the last time you saw a bull riding a horse? I mean, you don't know what videos I've seen. I don't even want to know, bro. <laughs> uh, that's a joke. Anyways, Relira, are you placing a bet? I'll sit this one out. Cougar's gonna place a bet. Ah, uh, don't uh, don't take this the wrong way, Thoros. He he yells um into the center of the uh, the rodeo. Uh, Junto, you hear Kugra betting uh, 300 gold on the horse. So, how this is going to work. You must stay mounted for three rounds. At the beginning of each round, uh, there will be checks or saves contested by the warhorse. If you stay mounted for three rounds of successes, sorry, after three rounds of successes, they are safely dismounted and receive a prize. Okay. As you mount this horse, it's already like, it's not bucking, but it's like, yeah, you can tell it wants you off. It's kind of throwing its head side to side and, and neighing very loudly. As you hop on the back of this creature, he says, Betting ends now? Are you ready, Thoros? And he As smiles. Here we go. 
and he releases and immediately runs to the edge. The horse immediately starts to buck. You have a choice of a dexterity save or an animal handling check. Huh. Oh, I don't have advantage, sorry. You stay mounted easily as this thing bucks. And you're, you're, you're doing this like you grew up in a rodeo. It's one success. It continues to buck. It, its back feet come out and kick the air as it tries to launch you forward. Give me another one. Your, cho your choice, dex or animal handling. Oof. A shame. You nearly fall off. Actually, that's a nat one on a save. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. you fly. As this thing kicks forward, you go head over... Uh, your head passes it, and as you do, it kind of goes almost slow motion, and you can almost see the smile in the horse's eye. As you tumble forward, and it takes a bite and yanks you downward even quicker. You slam your shoulder in the back of your neck into the ground. And that's it! Clowns! Clowns! Get in there! They all start rushing in, and this thing leaps up, uh, and it brings its hooves straight down. Deck save or a strength save, your choice. Fourteen. You managed to, uh... Oh, I gotta do its roll, sorry. Yeah, you, uh... You you put both your hands up to catch its, uh, its hooves, but... You are not quite strong enough, didn't get a good enough grip, as it slams its hooves into you. Cool. It slams its hooves directly into your chest, and you feel a couple ribs crack uh, before uh, the the clowns are able to get in there, and it starts to um, uh, they they start to try and distract it and and try and get it off you, but it's not having it. Another deck save or strength save, please. I get to attack back. Uh, not right now. It's just the oh, fuck. Uh, this time, its hooves come up, and you manage to get your your um, uh, your hands grip its ankles, and you kind of toss it to the side. It flies about ten feet before it hits and rolls, and it's trying to get back up. Um, now the clowns are in between you and and the horse. Uh, suddenly, you hear a a crack as a shot from some projectile weapon shoots across the field. The horse, nay, and it kind of stumbles back and forth before it collapses. What uh, the fuck? I'm going to fight that horse. No, I can't no. believe they killed it. <laughs> they didn't kill it. Oh, uh, good. As, as you look over, you see this massive dart sticking out of its side with little feathers on the end. Ah, oh, that's a shame, Thoros, the man says as he comes back in. I'd help you up, but uh, I don't think I can really pick you up. But good try, oh. good try. Thoros will stand up, dusting himself off, and wincing at the slight pain. That was a good time. I had a good time trying. <laughs> you say through your cracked ribs. With every breath, you get a little bit of a twinge of pain there. But you, you, you stand up. Uh, Junto, you unfortunately have lost your 100 gold. Cougar, however... Ha! Yeah! Uh, it's okay, Thoros. Round of drinks on me. As uh, he collects his... Uh, it was two to one odds, 300. So 600 gold. Yeah, Cougar's getting mugged. <laughs> I'll walk over to the cleric. What, uh... What, uh... What's your, uh... Uh, what's your deal? How do we fix this, or can you? Does, uh, have a seat. Papa squat. 
Uh, she does a little check. She's like, ah, it's not too bad. Just a broken rib. Um, I mean, you're not dead, so that's a good thing. It's not going to cost you much. Uh, but we do take a small donation. Uh, we ask for a minimum of five gold. Um, done. Very well. And you can see that they have a, uh, a small symbol on, uh, on the cleric's armor. And at this point, you also notice that this cleric is walking around with a, uh, a crutch now. It wasn't using a crutch before, and its leg seems to be twisted to the side. As the cleric puts his hand on you, and he chants, you, you can hear the chant getting um, almost more strained, and you swear you can hear something like a bone crack. But yours feels better. And as he takes his hand away, he kind of like holds his ribs. <sighs> All right. Five gold for the House of Healing, please. His voice seems a little more strained now. Are you okay, friend? Uh, unfortunately, it is part of being a cleric of Lathander. We cannot heal without taking the damage upon ourselves. That's why there's several of us here. I got another one or two of these before we switch out for another cleric. Kind of chuckles, and as he does, he, he gives another wince of pain. Do other faiths have this requirement? No, it is just the... Just the followers of Lathander. We heal others by taking the damage upon ourselves. So what you're saying is there's a better way to do this. Oh, I mean, that's... Depends on how you look at it. Uh, I, I, I believe in Lathander's way. You now, heal the pain of others by taking it on yourself is... More of a noble cause than simply... Getting rid of pain altogether. Or without pain, joy well, cannot I, exist. I'm glad I could help you. He chuckles. Well, that's not the first time I've heard that joke. He chuckles and he says, you should be good now. Have a good day, sir. Thank you. I hope you heal soon. Six to eight weeks. And uh, he, as soon as you get up, he kind of like takes your chair. And uh, another Claire comes over and gives them some water. So. A, uh, a little bit of a su success with the Gnome Flinger. A unfortunate failure with the Rodeo. There's still many more games. If anybody wishes to check anything out. Huh? I would like to try the rodeo. Okay. Um, as the uh, tranquilized horse is dragged off, uh, he brings the white stallion back out. Who's next? Who wants to give it a go? Me. I do. Very well. So you know the rules? You've been here long enough, been watching? Yep. All right, and he kind of looks at your uh, the claws in your hands and your feet. He says, the, uh, the only caveat is please do not use your claws on my horse. It's no fun, but whatever you say, boss, it's your horse. Appreciate that. As well. Mount up. Betting begins now. Uh, wh what's your name? You can just call me Junto. Three to one odds on Junto. Two to one odds for the horse. Betting begins now. Just give us a minute, if you don't mind, Mr. Junto. Anybody want to take a bet? Yeah, I want to bet 100 on Junto. Uh, 
Uh, Rhaelyra bets uh, 15 on Junto. Uh, she must really believe in me. She's hey, just frugal, bro. Just frugal. Hey, I placed a bet. Oh, Cougar again, huh? Yeah, yeah little asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder how he feels about the gnome player. <laughs> <laughs> Says, all right, betting's closed. Are you ready, Junto? Send it. And three, two, one. He releases the reins, and the white stallion immediately starts to buck. Uh, your choice of uh, deck save or um, animal handling. Damn. Yeah, it, it starts to buck, and you're just... It's like you've rode something uh, bucking before. And you, you're, you look like a professional. You're barely even moving in the saddle as it bucks and tosses. Your, your torso kind of just shifting to hold your weight. Um, to everybody else, it is. it seems like you're just sitting there. It's barely even visible. It continues to buck, and this time it tries to do a spin. As it spins and bucks, uh, give me another deck save or animal handling. This isn't my first rodeo, and I'm not talking about horses. Yeah, once again, you just kind of like go with it as it spins and spins. It tries one more time. Give me another one. Ooh, that's a high one. No. You you start to slip. Um, you're you're basically like almost riding um on its side now. You got your one hand is uh still over top of the saddle, and you're without using your claws. You're trying to keep your uh your leg sitting in the saddle. Uh, it wasn't a nat one, so you didn't actually fall all the way off. You hear, oh, oh, he's getting close, everybody. Um, the horse immediately uh, does a high kick into the air, putting you and his ass end quite a ways up. Give me another one. Yeah. Do you have anything to uh, change this outcome? I think, uh, I think so. Can I use my feline agility? Post it for me. Let's see. No, that's got nothing to do with uh, a save, unfortunately. Got to be something that changes the outcome of a save. I'm looking... Um, wait, mobile? Nope, I think I just fail. Do you remember what I told you you get if you have your backstory and your image done and shit for first session? What do you get? Uh, an inspo point. 
you want to use it. Shit, I did have my shit somewhat done. You had it, uh, I mean, y you got it I done. I didn't give you time to do shit that you like to do. <laughs> no, that I need to do, sir. <laughs> but you do, but I did mark it down. You have an inspiration point. Should I burn the inspiration Is there point? somewhere? <laughs> I don't think then so, without know. cheating. Okay, yeah. so I'm burning it. All right. Um, as it bucks for a second, your whole body flies off, but you hold on to the reins. You yank the reins, and the horse's head kind of comes backwards, um, putting it right back into position underneath you, and you slam yourself back into the saddle. Holy shit! He's done it! He's done it! Um, uh, the, all the clowns come in, and, and the man runs over and grabs the reins, and the stallion immediately stops bucking. Come on down, Junto! Congratulations! You are the first one today to win. Nobody else has stayed on. Congratulations! Well done, sir. Give me a perception check. I think I get advantage on yes. Proficiency and perception and stealth is advantage, right? No, uh proficiency just means you got a check mark in your um in your it adds your proficiency bonus to it. Okay. Which you should have. It should be checked in your skills, right? There's a check next to it. <laughs> Sorry, just give me a second, I'm not used to looking for this. In my skills. Uh, I don't see where you're talking about. Okay, so your skills, right? You see where you've got your perception, your stealth, and all that, right? Yeah. Is there a check mark next oh, to Yeah, there is a check mark. Okay, so that means you've already you've got your proficiency in it. Okay, cool. <laughs> As uh, as he's shouting, uh, you can definitely see that he is uh, looking over the sides of his horse and such, and he, he's definitely he's probably looking to make sure that uh, you really did not use your claws, which you did not. Um, says, "Well, congratulations. I have a prize for you. I want you to roll me a." A D5 and then D100. That was almost terrible. It's table one, it's still horrible. <laughs> Damn, then it is terrible. <laughs> 83. Huh. That might not be terrible. Hold on a sec. Let's see what this is. Kelly reaches for the prized prize while the game clerk offers her new friend the smallest prize in the pile. <laughs> you just call me the game clerk? <laughs> Lauren is literally insane. I have no idea who she is right now. <laughs> I kind of like that. Uh, he hands you what looks to be a small wand. And uh, as he pulls it out, he's like, check this out. This is really fun. And the end of this um, strange wand ignites. And he writes your name in the air. And where he writes your name, it seems to be lit with a uh, fiery glow, almost sparkling, uh, kind of like a, a, a sparkler. However, instead of it disappearing quickly in the air, it hangs there for a moment. I hope you enjoy your prize. And he hands it to you. 
Um, this is called, you can drag this in from the compendium. It is called the Wand of Air Glyphs. It is a non-attunement item, so make sure to throw that in the non-attunement section of your magic items handout. Or feature section, sorry. Sir, appreciate that. All right, and we have... Thoros, you bet 100, you get 300 gold from the bookie. Relira, you get 45 gold from the bookie. And you see Kugra hand over 200 gold um, to the bookie. Oh, well. Had to bet against the new guy, after all. <laughs> Thoros is going to hand the uh, 100 gold to um, Junto to say, hey, sorry, I cost you 100. Now you're even. Thanks. Sorry, I was muted because I was fucking dying. <clears throat> ah, don't worry about it. I'm I'm still up four hundred. I could buy a whole ass business for that. Cougar, I didn't hand Cougar shit. Oh, I I thought it was Cougar. You uh you handed. No, Jinto. Oh. <laughs> Jinto, are you taking the hundred? Yeah, 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 yeah. I said thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I didn't hear that. Well, who's next? He begins to shout as uh, you guys head off, unless, uh, Relira, you want to attempt. Yes. Relira shakes her head and declines. And go. I think it's time we go. You have to close. Oh, no, yeah. She wasn't saying she wanted to play the game, Blair. She, uh, Lyra was saying she wants to use her gloves and steal while he was giving me shit. Oh. Yeah. I thought she was talking about me. That's when she called I thought she was calling me the game clerk. No, no, no. Oh. So you he, so so let me get this straight. You want to walk out into the you want to sneak out into the middle of this um ring and try and steal in front of the entire crowd? I don't know. What I wanted was my new friend was getting a bad prize, so I wanted to to you know walk away with something a little better for him in my pocket. So the the man who's handing out the item is uh is in the middle of the rodeo. There is a crowd of a few hundred people around. You can attempt it if you'd like. That's up to you. <laughs> you heard it, right? No, I didn't hear nothing. All the, all the prizes are right there in the middle. There's nothing that's off to the side. No, all the prizes are in his bag at his waist. Oh, he has a bag of holding. Mm hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. 
I'll yeah. give it a go. Wait. What? You'll give the game a go? Yeah, because that's the only way to get close to it. Right? Okay, yeah. So she's going to play the game. Okay. So as he shouts, Who's next? I'll give it a go. Ah. An elf. Well. We're, uh... Hmm. Three to one odds on the horse. Two to one odds on, uh... Sorry, uh... What, what's your name? Rulira. On Rulira! Gonna bet on the horse. 200 gold. Cougar's not going to bet this time. Ah, I've already uh, made myself a little fortune. Thoros, you betting? And I'm so conflicted right now. I'll bet a hundred on the horse. Rhaelyra really looks over at Thoros and gives him um, a glance as if to say, uh, uh no need. <laughs> Cool. I'll bet a hundred on the horse. <laughs> but I'll split with you if I win. I wouldn't say that in character, though. He says, all right. Mount up. Betting ends now. Are you ready, Rolera? And they're off. Relira, deck save or animal handling check, your choice. <clears throat> Sorry, I was dying again. Um, as the horse bucks, you uh, you hold on for dear life, and uh, not uh, not much different than Junto. You seem to be holding on very tightly. Uh, your body barely moving as it as though as it bucks. Give me another one. Oh, wow. It bucks even harder. Um trying to kick you up over its uh over its head. And as uh as it does, uh you basically like take your feet out of the stirrups and place it place them both uh on the back of the neck. So even though it's kicking way up, uh, you're almost laying flat in the air. As it comes back down, it tries to do a buck and spin. Give me another one. Sixteen. Yeah, you you hold on. Uh, your your feet come off the back of its neck, and you put your uh legs back in the stirrups, and you squeeze your your legs together against the side. And as it kicks out, um, its back feet slip, and it begins to tumble. Um, but you hold on. Uh, you manage to get your your right leg out of the stirrup. And you kind of leap up and land on the side of it, still holding the reins, uh, one of your feet in the stirrups as it lands on its side. 
Congratulations! Well done! Well fucking done! Look at that! Two in a row! Two in a row! Come on, everybody! Who's coming up next? Because, I mean, two people in a row, everybody's got a good chance, right? Uh, suddenly the, the, there's a lineup of people wanting to, to attempt it. Uh, so, Junto, you lose. 600, sir. Thoros, you lose 300 gold. Ah, uh, now, Rolira. 200 down. Three to one odds, though. Oh, right. If you win, sorry, ignore that. Yeah, I was like, wait, what, bro? <laughs> <laughs> New rules for bookies, baby. If you lose, you you, you still owe the the rest of that uh, the amount, you know. <laughs> um, Relira, congratulations. Let's see what we've got for you, Relira. I want you to roll me a uh, D five, followed by a D one hundred. He pulls out a um, another wand. This one seems to be made of crystal and is completely um, see-through. It is clear. As he does this, he says, watch this. And he pulls out a weapon. And he touches the weapon with the wand. His sword suddenly is see-through. It is. Com it it looks like it's taken on the um, visual effects of a crystal itself. Well. Congratulations, and he hands you the wand. Uh, this is called the Wand of Windows. Uh, she also is trying to, is he handing this to her? Yes. Yeah, she was trying to take an action, I think, during this time. What action would that be? To steal back the money that they lost. Uh, the, it's the bookies that are taking the money. They're, they're in the crowd. Mic is on, but there's nothing coming out. I know she's thinking. Can I try to steal the money of all of some of all these people who've now gotten into line after my spectacular performance? Of course. So you're you're trying to swipe the money from from the bookies in the crowd after you received your item and head out? Is that correct? Um, I'm trying to just. I, I I'm not trying to be greedy, but I'm just trying to get them back. Okay, as uh, Relira exits the, uh, the fenced-in area of the rodeo, you look around. Give me a perception check, please. You notice a couple of the bookies. Um, however, with the money that they have been accepting and handing out... Um, 
it does not look like they are carrying much of it on them. Um, with your perception, it seems they're probably dropping it somewhere, but you're not sure where. Would you like to wander around the crowd and see if you can figure it out? Mike was on, but no sound. There we go. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Now I can, yes. Okay, yeah. Rilira looks about and wanders about the crowd. All right, roll me an investigation. And what are the other three of you doing as uh, Relira seems to be wandering around the crowd outside this rodeo? Uh, I'm going to walk towards Relira because she looks like she's on a mission. All right. Um, you begin to catch up to Relira. Um, you can see that uh, people are... Uh, seemed as she's walking through the crowd, she's not going unnoticed. Uh, she did just win, so there's a lot of people who are um, congratulating her and and um, cheering for her as she walks through the crowd. Uh, twenty two on your investigation. Yeah, you see um where they it looks like bookies are coming and dropping off the money and picking up money. There are six extremely large bodyguards uh, surrounding one man at a table. The man has uh, a book in front of him that he seems to write in as he, bring, as he collects money and uh, when he gives money to a bookie. Uh, around him, there are several small chests and plenty of bags of gold and silver and copper. What would you like to do? Earlier is going to try to go for just one or two small bags. As you're kind of eyeing the area and the situation, you notice that there are uh, these six very large men are keeping everybody back. I need you to describe for me how exactly you're going to do this. I'll, uh, give me a sec. I'll see if I got a map for this. All right, I don't, but I can get one real quick. Moment. Um... Uh, you know what? We are about halfway through, so while I find a map, why don't we take our 10-minute break, get up, stretch, go to the bathroom, get a drink, do what you gotta do. Uh, we'll be back at 5 minutes after 4. That works for everybody? Will okay. I figure this out?
Is Lauren back yet? He's not. She might be in the bathroom for a little bit. She might be having problems. Oh, no. okay. not feeling well? No. She had something this morning. She had not been feeling a little shitty. I guess literally. Uh, <laughs> wow, I'm, I'm sure she'll be happy to know that you know, <laughs> you decided to tell us that. Uh, in the meantime, you guys can drag yourselves out. Um, yeah. Oh, no, I forgot. I deleted Kugra because he was going to be leaving. So I got to go back to the other page and bring him in. This is Token. What's up, Bumper Cat? Uh, we're just waiting on one of our players, our, our theory, new players, right? to get back. Huh? There's a lot of people here, eh? Yeah, Ooh. it's a festival. And th this isn't exactly what it looks out like, but it's the closest I could get. You know, pretend that this whole area here is, uh, you know, kind of a little, little sandy. I thought it just looked pretty good. Well, it, I, I just stole it from uh, Incarnate, so... I mean, it does look good, but that's not what the uh, what the market actually looks like. It's uh, good. I'm about the the immersion, man. Well, uh, Thoros, what are you doing while we wait for um, Relira uh, as she's co kind of scoping the area out and? Looks like she's got her eye on something in this direction. So the earlier perception roll I threw was to see if I was actually paying attention and saw any of it. Uh, Thoros is staying back at the edge of the crowd, but watching carefully to see what goes down and keeping his mouth shut. Cougar looks over to you. Thoros, what are we doing? Where, where the other two go? And he's he's slurring pretty heavily at this point. He's pretty drunk. Let's go have another beer, Cougar. Ah, I'm always down for another L. Oh, oh, you know what we should have? Some whiskey. Let's get some, some good whiskey. Ah, the day is still young. We should pace ourselves. Fuck all of that. He immediately heads over to uh one of the, the beer stands. You watch him as he gets right up to the front. Just skips the whole line. Hey! You got any whiskey? Uh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, there's a line. Oh. Oh, is that what all these people are doing? Okay. And he goes to the back of the line. Are you going to join him in the line? Yeah, I'll stand with him in the back of the line and uh, still keep an eye on, on the others. Junto, as she seems to be uh, having an eye on this particular spot up here, you can see all the, the gold and uh, the chests and, and bags and you all see the very large men with, uh, with, with axes. Um, you also see that there are guards walking around the festival grounds. Wearing the colors of uh, Waterdeep. Is there anything you wish to do while you wait for uh, Relira? Mm. 
Um, uh, I guess I'm just scoping it out. Okay. Oh, she's back? Okay. <laughs> Relira. You see the area over here. Um, you've noticed that there are some um, city guards walking around the festival grounds. Uh, but you also see that the man at the table here is surrounded by six very large, what you would assume to be bodyguards. What do you wish to do? I put up my hood. I know that I'm that I'm wearing my special gloves and my special cloak. I put up the hood and I, I, you know, try to sneak through with my stealth and perception and to uh, use my my use my dexterity to take a a bag or two. Okay, so I'm going to inform you before you do this um, exactly how stealth works. Um, stealth does not make you invisible. Just as a heads up, what you're planning to do is walk into this tent filled with six massive bodyguards and try to steal from right in front of them. They might not be able to notice you swiping a bag. However... Um, you are not invisible. So if you walk into that tent, they are going to see you. And they'll, like, care. But they won't think I'm just some random... They, they'll, like, care and pay attention. Yeah. I can't, like, be doing that in such a way where, like, my timing and stuff is that I... They're distracted and I sneak through. You can You can attempt it, and you can describe how you want to do it. So right now, you see uh, all the guards seem to be facing towards the front of the tent. However, uh, there are two at the very back of the tent. Now, there is a chest between them and a few bags. Uh, this one here is basically staring in... I'll show you. Basically staring in this direction here. This one is staring in this direction here. This one is staring in that direction. That direction. Whoops. And the other two are staring in that direction. Do you see, did you see all the arrows? I did not. I'm sorry. Okay. Watch watch this this tent up here in the north, all right? So yeah. they're staring. in those directions, all right? So if you want to try and do this, I need to know exactly how you're making your way up there um, and how you're going to do this. And then we can determine whether you're just going to get seen or if you're going to be able to roll to see if you get anything. Is there any other way to enter the tent? Um, All of the sides are up. So it's just, I shouldn't have said tent. It's more like a, a canopy. Um, being held up by, like, poles and, and that kind of thing. All of the sides are open. Okay, so then I would try to come... I would come around from behind the the, the bush over uh, the, the part of the bush that's, like, brushing right up from the tent and uh, just swipe the, the one or two bags that are that are closest to the edge. Okay. I'm not trying to take any massive risks and and take more than than I think I can. I'm I'm playing it to uh to just yeah swipe a bag or two. All right. So how we're gonna do this then is you're going to start moving your token. So if you click and drag your token um to each spot, go one space at a time. And how you want to get in there. That is not one space at a time. 
girl just zips across the map unless you were trying to use your um your blessing of the raven queen to teleport 30 feet We don't know how to really go like left or right on the computer. That, oh, there we go. That I'm using. Um, but yeah, I'll use the the blessing of the Raven Queen to like pop up there and put my my hood on and try to do my thing. Okay. As you get to that spot, I need a stealth check, please. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Stop moving. All right, give me a stealth check. And 18, it's not bad. Currently, it seems like they have not yet noticed you. You may continue doing what you wish. Okay, so I... how Am I right in there? Like, how far away are the nearest bags? Um, so each square is five feet, and all of the bags are... The, the closest one is like right underneath the edge here in between these two. Okay. Um, so I'm about 10 feet from there? Yep. Okay. Um, so I'll do my teleport, my blessing of the Raven Queen. Oh, I already did that? No, I didn't. I, that's how you got there. I told you that you started. I thought I was just walking. No, you were here, and you just, like, jumped over here. Well, because I didn't know that I was supposed to go one at a time or how to do that. I was I, just trying to walk. No, I know. So, so how to do it is basically you just click and drag to the next square. And each square is five feet. So, like, well, once we get into, into combat, which, depending how this goes, we might end up in combat, um... Each square counts as five feet. So if you just move a little bit and release, then that will move you. Uh, your your one square will be five feet. Okay. So can I do the blessing of the Raven Queen thing to go right to where it is and with my hood on and attempt to swipe a couple? So you're going to appear right in between these two? Well, they're looking straight ahead, so yeah. They are, but I mean, they still have peripheral vision. So if you if you teleport right in between them, they're gonna see you because it doesn't make you invisible, right? Because th think of them like a real person, right? If you put your hand directly ninety degrees from you, you can still see your hand, right? So even though they're looking that way, they still have peripheral vision. And especially if something just appears out of nowhere, they're, they, they are going to notice you. Is what, so I... He cut out. Can you hear? Yep, now I can. Okay. What I'm trying to do is to not enter under the canopy, but go like just behind it. Um, and to, or will they still be able to see me? They might. It'll rely on rolls at that point. You, you rolled an 18 to get I'll, to where you are, I'll... right? Uh, okay. So like if you get closer, they they might see you, they might not. It it will depend on rolls, on another stealth roll from you and a perception from them. Okay. Let's do it. Or can I look over at Thoris and uh Junto and give them a motion like you cool with this? Uh from where you are, I'm going to say you probably can't see them through the crowd and and so on cuz they're way down here. 
And right now, there's a stack of crates in between you and Junto. Can I do some type of a investigation or perception thing to, to figure out like what my chances are of being able to do this successfully? I will give you a... I'm going to say a flat intelligence check. So don't use your, your skill checks, but go over to where your intelligence is. Um, the All those numbers on the, the far left side. And just click the word that just says intelligence. Not intelligence save, just intelligence. This is going to be very difficult to pull off without um, noticing, but, or without being noticed, but you are, you do have uh, confidence in your um, sneaky abilities. All right, I'm going to try. <laughs> All right. So if you're going to move again, I need a stealth check. And then you may move to where you're going. Okay. Make your move to where you're heading. Is that it? The chest is in this square here, right in between these two. To be able to try and grab anything, you will have to be in this next square. So far, they have not noticed you. With my hood on and my gloves on, I attempt to, to swipe a, a bag. Give me a sleight of hand, please. You manage to slowly reach your hand over. So slow, it's not even barely visibly moving. And you grip this bag. And as you do so, you make sure that it is tight. So when you go to lift it up, the coins don't jingle. You slowly move it away. And what do you do now? Now can I use the Blessing of the Raven Queen to teleport back 30 feet? How many of those do you get a day? He gets three. Then this will be number three. You may teleport yourself 30 feet away.
So if you want to know how far 30 feet is without actually counting it out, what you can do is on the left side, you should have like a little toolbar, right? And you should see one that looks like a measuring stick, like a ruler. If you click that and then you go to drag somewhere, a little box will pop up and you can choose, uh, yeah, exactly, a line. And then you can put it, find where 30 feet is. And you, the only thing is, you cannot teleport into, into an occupied space. And if I might make a suggestion... It would probably not be a good idea to just appear in front of uh, people. You might want to remain in an area where nobody's going to notice you. Yep, and then you can just drag yourself to that spot. Uh, you got to go up and click the select arrow at the top of that same toolbar where you found the ruler. Okay. As you you grab this um bag of coins, you're unsure of what is in this bag currently, but you know it's coins. You pull your hand back slowly and then you use your blessing of the Raven Queen to disappear and reappear behind these crates. Now, currently you are holding the bag of coins. What would you like to do? I'll put it in my bag. Okay. Slide this bag into your bag of holding. And you hear some noise coming from the tent. Hey, there's supposed to be another bag of coins here. Where'd, where'd the bag go? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, we're, we're standing right here. To, are you sure there was a bag of coins there? Yes, yes, of course I'm sure. Spread out, find the thief. And you see a couple of the uh, men uh, start to fan out. Um, you hear the man behind the table call out, Guards! Guards, there's a thief in the crowd! Um, a few of the guards come rushing over. I find where I put all the guards. As the guards rush over to the tent... Uh, how do you know there's money missing? I mean, look, you have lots here. Are you sure it's missing? Yes, yes, there was two bags of coins on this chest behind me. These idiots apparently are not keeping a good enough eye out. Find the money. 50 gold reward for whoever brings me back that bag of, of money. And the guards and a couple of the uh, men start to fan out while the others uh, who are left form a tighter circle um, around the money. And now they are keeping an eye out straight ahead. So this one's kind of like looking straight south, and this one's keeping an eye out behind. This one is looking forward, and this one here is looking uh, to the north. What would you like to do, Rhaelyra? Uh, by the way, you all hear this. Uh, Thoros, Kugra, and Junto. And noticing that Relira is uh, nowhere to be seen at the moment, who would like to do what right now? Can you remind me what directions they're looking in? <sighs> yep. Oh, shit.
See those arrows? Yep, I saw them. And uh, the the guards and uh, a couple of the oops, um, very large bodyguards are uh, starting to fan out throughout the crowd. Now you're pretty sure that they haven't seen you, so it's not likely they're going to be able to identify you. But uh, Thoros, what was the wisdom for? See whether or not Thoros puts together the possible relationship uh, between Rulera missing and the. Missing goods. With the Nate? No, probably not. Although you are curious yep. where she is. Um you and uh yeah. you and you and Cougar have gotten that uh gotten your ale at this point and and Cougar got a whiskey to go with it. Uh he is he is quite intoxicated at this point. It's not a party till you throw up Yeah He kind of cheers. Um but Junto and Ralira. What are you two doing? So, I'm going to run uh -oh. You're going to run? You your tabaxi no, ass no, getting no, the no, zoomies, no, no, no. bro. Zoomies. Sorry, I was trying to figure out how to zoom in. Uh, mouse wheel. Because I'm on a laptop. Oh. But, uh, um, there, there's a slider bar up uh, at the top no, of your I chat. I, I'm trying to, I was trying to do it with the, the trackpad. It just took me a second. All right, I'm ready now. All right, I'm going to run over here. And are these just like humans or are they like elves? Who? The, the the town folk near me. Uh, it's a mix. Humans, elves, halflings, gnomes. I'm going to to beg for for some semblance of order and for somebody to brace us with music in this trying time. To somber the mood. Okay, um, give me a luck roll. You want evens. A d20. It just so happens that this person's here like, A song? I could do a song! And out of, uh, from behind his back, he pulls out a violin and he just starts going to town. Um, it... This song kind of comes out uh, almost like a um, Groucho Marx song, you know, got that kind of got that feel and <laughs> almost like a Groucho Marx heist instrumental. Lyra like comes from behind. Can I can I move myself? Yeah. So, and I can't go. Is your hood still up? Uh, no. Jun I've, take my hood. I've taken my hood down. Junto, you see uh, Relira come around the uh, the stack of crates um, from the direction of the tent. Relira, how are you moving right now? Like with urgency? Are you remaining calm? Uh, without my hood on, I'm moving very, very calm without urgency and um, playing my lyre as I come up about, you know, you know, it looks like I'm about 10 feet behind the the violinist. Yeah, as you come out of nowhere and you begin to play your lyre along with the uh, violinist, give me a performance, please. Mm 
the violinist kind of looks at you and is like kind of gives you a a, a so-so um reaction but he continues to play and as you walk forward and and join in the playing um Thoros and Cougar can both, you guys can both hear this, uh, the very distinctive, um, lyre playing, um, matching up, uh, kind of with a violinist in, uh, to the side of the festival. Oh, more music. I love music. <laughs> You're matching up, kind of, yeah. And, yeah, and Ralira sees them, smiles at them, and as this, once the song is wrapping up, you know, gives a nod to the violinist, tosses him a coin, and <laughs> glances at her new friends that she's ready to depart. Okay. So as the song wraps up, um, how how do you let them know you're ready to uh to get out of here? It's just you know that look like a little little nod towards. See what else is around here? Is there? Uh there's beer oh, tents. Uh, there's still some games a little further south off the map. Nod towards a beer tent, perhaps. Well, uh, this is a food one here. This one has uh beer, and ale. Uh, this one's got, like, um, like, this is kind of a dessert tent. Uh, this one here's got, like, uh, like, uh, almost like a, a buffet feast. Yeah. And this one down here's got, like, um, some strange dough with a red sauce and some sort of cheese on top. Where did you say the sweets were? To the left. If you zoom in, you can see pies and such on the table. Earlier, emotions over, kind of nods her head over towards the pies, uh, looking at her friends, and starts walking in that direction. Cougar goes, Ah, I could eat. Aye, let's go. He starts heading over following Thoros. Uh, there's a little halfling back behind the, uh, behind the counter. Oh, what can I get you? We have apple, we have cherry, uh, we have this new invention, uh, I call it lemon meringue. Uh, we also have some strawberry and rhubarb, there's a blueberry, and my personal favorite, jumbleberry. It's blackberries, blueberries, raspberries, and strawberries. All the field berries. It's my favorite. Multi-berry for the three of us. There's no discrimination here amongst berries. For all three of you, there's four of you. Are you, are you leaving Cougar out? Multi-berries for the four of us. Very well. Uh, that will be four silver, please. And she starts plating up um, several slices of this pie. I give her one gold. Oh, uh, let me get your change here. No need, no need. Oh, very generous of you. Thank you, thank you. And she slides it into her uh, apron pocket. <clears throat> Sorry. Very stuffy and gross still. Fucking COVID. Um... As she plates it all up, she hands you all a slice. Uh, the the guards and a few of the bodyguards are still walking around. Um, after you get your pie, are you guys finding a sp spot to sit? Are you guys, like, heading out of here? What are you doing? Let's go find some more games. Those were fun. Yeah. Let's do that. All right, boys. As um, 
You guys start to head out. Uh, you notice a guard come over to the table. Ah, uh, excuse me, have you seen some suspicious characters here? Uh, no, I don't know what you mean. Uh, what would you call suspicious characters? Uh, um, uh, trying not to sound, uh, a little racist. He, he, he kind of, uh, he stammers over his words. Uh, you know, people you don't normally see around here, maybe. Oh, well, no, I don't think so. Hmm. Very well. Uh, thank you for your help. And he goes about uh, the rest of the area, kind of, uh, you hear him uh, stopping and questioning a few people. You definitely notice that he's, uh, he's kind of avoiding um, most of the humans. Um, however, he does uh, stop to question mostly halflings and... Um, some elves who are not in uh, fancy garb. Uh, but you guys make your way out of the area um, with these, uh, with this pie on uh, what seems to be some sort of wax paper in your hand. And as you guys take a bite of this, it is absolutely unbelievable. The, the pastry is flaky and buttery. Um, the filling is sweet, not tart at all. It is, this is the perfect pie. It's been a good day. This pie is so delicious. I think I'm about satisfied with the festival. How about we get out of here? Works for me. I have some shopping to do. Horos, what kind of shopping are you trying to do? Blacksmith and uh, Boyer Fletcher. Damn, no magic. Have you met Arcane Bob yet? Does Thoros know? Okay, so, um, as you uh, head out of the area, unsure of exactly where to go to find what you're looking for, uh, you start to ask some people, um, what kind of blacksmith are you looking for? Armor? Weapon? Just material to sharpen my uh, auburn with. Oh, so you're looking for, like, uh, whetstones? Whetstones, oils to maintain it, that's it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, I'm at it. I could also use a spear and a shield. Okay, so... E60. Where is D60? It is circled in gray. Why do I have so many grays? Jesus Christ. Seven. Fuck is D60. Docs. D is for docs. E N D seventy one. All right, somebody help me find D sixty on the map. Oh, there it is. Um, so when you ask, somebody sends you, uh, tells you down in the dock ward, um, just off of Fish Street. Uh, he recommends, I lost the name of it now, uh, the Fish Scale Smithy. Lovely. So it is going to take you about an hour, an hour and a half of walking. Um, to get there. It's a very large city. So after about an hour, you you uh, you pass uh, right by um, the Yawning Portal and head further south. 
And let me see what... And I don't mean to drag everybody with me. They may have other goals as well. I think we'd like to tag along, if you don't mind. Not in the least. You're more than welcome. Oh. Oh, that's it. I like that. I never like the sound of that. <laughs> um okay. Uh so it's hitting about uh I'm gonna say probably roughly noon, maybe one one o'clock in the afternoon. Um as you arrive down here at the fish scale smithy. Um this building is uh it's a tall two story building. Out front uh you see on the sign, uh, it says Fish Scale Smithy, and it looks like a fish wearing armor and wielding a spear in one of its fins. You hear strange noises uh, from inside. Uh, they're very faint, but it sounds almost like fighting. I'll unshoulder my halberd and walk in carefully. As you walk in, there's a man behind the counter. Ah, hello. Welcome to the Fish Scale Smithy. What can I do for you? Um, as you walk in and uh, he greets you, you can hear the, the sounds of uh, fighting and cheering. And it seems to be coming from a, uh, a door behind him at the back oh, of the okay. shop. Underground Fight Club. That's cool. I can deal with that. Uh, so I am here for three things. Maintenance equipment for my halberd here, and I'll hold it up to show it to you. Uh, also, a shield and a spear. Hmm. May I, as he uh, places his hands out to take a look at the halberd? I'll hand it to him. Hmm. This is already uh, quite a um, well made weapon. Now, I'm not saying it's outside of my skill set. I, I could make another one of these, but, uh... Let's see. Um, I do have maybe a few things. Uh, let me think a moment. Holy fuck. Okay. Um, says, now, if you're just looking for a whetstone and some oil, um, it's, it's fa fairly cheap. However, I do get, did just get a new shipment in of, uh, oil of sharpness. Now, it is a little pricey, but, uh, I mean, let's be honest. If, uh, you're going into battle, I mean... I mean, would you rather take a chunk out of somebody's arm or take their whole fucking arm, right? <laughs> it might be worth it. Now, it's, uh... It is about 4,000 gold for this oil of sharpness. Yeah, that's a little outside my range, buddy. Sorry. Oh, very well, very well. Um, so, player knowledge, oil of sharpness... Uh, can either coat up to five pieces of slashing or piercing ammunition or one melee weapon. Um, it makes... For one hour, the coated item is magical and has a plus three to bonus uh, attack and damage. So, future reference. May I interrupt? For, I was trying to speak earlier, and I, I'm wondering if Relira can check her purse, because if she has enough, then she might offer it to contribute uh are you waiting to get into the shop to check out this uh this bag um no i think she's just trying to what without taking the the bag out of her bag just you know open up her bag and and see feel how much is in there uh so that's not quite how the bag of holding works uh so how that works is it's basically an extra dimensional space so like this this it's only a tiny bag but when you put something into it 
uh, basically the room is almost infinite. So when you reach your hand in, you're not going to be able to just, you know, feel around to find what's in there. How it works is you have to think of what is in there and it will appear in your hand. So you would have to take it out to actually like see how much money's in this. And what does the bag look like that I stole? Uh, it's just a, a like a brown leather sack. And just player to player, I'm super touched you would offer to share, but yeah, that's that's like a ton of gold for a marginal benefit. But thank you so much for that. I'll throw the thought. While he is uh, doing his his um, dealing here, do you want to find out how much is in it? How much did the thing that he wanted cost? About 4,000 gold. No, no, clarify, I don't want it. <laughs> Alrighty, I just step back. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not trying to be rude. I just that's that's crazy talk for that much money. I'm cheap. Do you want to find out how much is in the bag, though? You want to take it out and count it, or no? Uh, no, no, no. I just step back. I'm I'm sorry. No, you're so good. It's okay. Uh, he says, well, uh, a simple whetstone and some regular oil, just to make sure to keep it sharp, is uh only about a gold. Um, now, you're looking for a shield and spear. Is this correct? I am indeed. Are you looking for a regular one? Do you wish to have one commissioned? Uh, do you have, like, a shield of the watcher? Uh, a shield... I'm sorry, is, is that a magical item? Oh, it is, you're right. Yeah, let's just look at regular shields. Well, I mean, uh, I, I can still commission you one. I just, I don't really have the ability to do, um, to imbue them with magic. Um, I mean, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Arcane Bob, but he's got a, uh, a location in the city here. Uh, he might have them. I'll have to look him up, but we can go with Mundane for now. That works. Okay, and would you like to have a commission, like one designed to your specifications, or are you just looking for, you know, one off my shelf? Off the shelf is fine. Okay, okay. Well, uh, we have a uh, assortment here. There's bucklers. These are a little small, very easy to wield in combat. Um, but obviously, since they are so small, it is not great for... Um, protection it's more of a last ditch effort to keep a sword from going through your throat uh we have some kite shields we have some tower shields um now we do have uh you know obviously a obviously a uh a scale of you know masterworks versus regular ones so here we've got uh, your regular shields. Uh, these are not our best work, of course, but they do get the job done. Uh, you could easily see one of these on, like, say, a city guardman or a, uh, a low-ranking soldier in, in an army. Uh, he shows you several. They're, they're quite mundane. Uh, you know, there's no polish to them. They don't look... They, they look like normal shields. He's like, then we've got our uh, our next one. These ones have a increased price tag because we did spend longer on them. And then we have, you know, the much more expensive ones. And he shows you, like, up at the very top shelf um, hanging from the wall. And these ones are beautiful. Um, absolute masterworks. Uh, there's even some that have some, uh, um, some special etchings or a... Um, or in, are in different shapes. Like there's a lion head, there's a, a bull head, there's a wolf, a bear. So player to DM, I'm looking something Spartan, like think 300, if you will, uh, and slightly better quality than the, the, the cheapest, but depends on what it costs. Like I buy a plus one if I could afford it, but if I can't, I'll go with mundane, it's okay. Hmm, let's see.
plus one shield is uncommon. Okay, so you're looking at this range here, and um, you definitely see some, um, I believe the ones that Spartans would use would, would be classed as, they were circular, right? They were. Okay, so um, you definitely see some uh, here, and there's a couple that are large enough for you. Um, it's about uh, about three feet um, in uh, diameter. Uh, it is fully made of metal, and in the center there's a little um, uh, a bulge in it uh, that's supposed to be there. Uh, it's helpful to deflect um, deflect swords and, and spears and whatnot to either go down, up, or to the left or the right. Uh, this would be a plus one shield, and plus ones, uncommon. Uh, give me a sec, where's my handout? Hmm. I'll tell you what, first time customer, I could release this to you for 400 gold. Okay. Do you have a spear to go with it? <laughs> I do. Are you looking for the, the same type of price range, or are you looking for better? Same price range, please. Okay, okay. He thinks for a moment. He brings down one that um, seems to be um, made of uh, a wooden shaft. However, there seems to be a uh, a line of uh, what seems to be steel that actually goes all the way around the shaft in a spiral up to the head. And it seems to be connected together as if it's one large piece of metal. Um and he brings it down, and the head is very shiny. You see the candlelight glinting off the edge of it. Um, I could let this go for 400. Given I'm buying two, could you do the two for 750? Persuasion disadvantage. I'm sorry. As it is, I'm already barely breaking even on this price. Fair enough. It's a good price and they are good gear. So I'll take them at 800 Thank you. Very well. Um, you know, you look like a very strong lad. I don't suppose I could interest you in uh, making some money. What do you have in mind? Well... Yeah, you all look like you are uh, quite strong. We do have a bit of a tournament going on um, tonight. Right now, what you hear, and he kind of motions towards the uh, the door behind him, and you can still hear the cheering and the the fight. Uh, right now, they're doing solos. It's a little bit of an arena we have. I'm interested. What's the price? Well, there is uh, 200 gold per person off the top, and depending on the crowd and what they bet on you, and what kind of a show you put on, the purse may go up. Never down, however. Never down. And is there an entry fee? No. Uh, I just warn you that uh, it is to the death. And should you lose, we do not spend the money to resurrect. Understood. Kugra um, kind of wandering around the shop looking a little drunk. It's like, ah... Uh... I mean, I'll I'll watch, but uh, 
I don't kill for no reason, so I will have to sit this one out, Thoros. Maybe, maybe by the time, uh, maybe Ray and Zinn will be back. Uh, I agree with you entirely, Cougar. I couldn't kill someone for just a handful of coins with no cause. Does Junto or, um, Relira pipe up during this conversation? Yeah, it's a shame. Is there perhaps another tournament that's to first blood or to someone yields? Oh, well, I mean, if you wish to get somebody to yield, uh, I mean, that is not outside the rules. Uh, I'm just warning that most who join tend to finish their opponents. If you wish to just go until they yield, that is up to you. Understood. So, should I throw your name in, in the hat? I'll pass. Shame. You would have brought in a mighty purse. But is there anything else I could help you all with today? Speaking only for myself, I'm good. Cougar's like, I don't need nothing. He is, uh, he, he is quite drunk at this point. <sighs> oh, uh, wait, do you got more, more ale? N no, sir, we, we don't serve, well, down in the fighting pit we do, in the arena, or, uh, right next door, the, uh, we kind of share the entry into the, uh, tavern, or the, into the arena with a tavern next door. Uh, it is called the Thirsty Sailor. Oh, Cougar says. And he looks at you guys. Now, now, Cougar, don't spend all your winnings. Ah, just a little bit of celebrating, lot. Well, we'll carry you home if you can't walk. You ain't gonna be carrying me. I'm a strong Durgar. And he kind of like slams one hand against his chest and puffs it out and makes a uh, a face that uh, it, uh, is probably meant to show how great he is. And in reality, is just showing how drunk he is. And Thoros says patiently, of course, you're a strong Dorgar. How about uh, the other two of you? Uh, any uh, Any services I could render for the two of you? No sound. Probably not me. I think I'm okay. And I believe Relaine or uh, yeah Relira said she's okay too. Well, then I bid you adieu and uh remember if you have any friends that are looking for uh blacksmithing works. Please come see Aldir at the fish scale blacksmith or at the fish scale smithy. So, where would you all like to go now? Um Anything else? Do we know where we're sleeping tonight? 
I would recommend the Yawning Portal are very luxurious accommodations at a budget price. And conveniently located atop the, um, what's the best way to describe it? The holdings of a mad mage, Hallister, whom you may come to know, uh, is quite a unique fellow. Sounds interesting. I think we're both game. I've got some more shopping to do, but I don't want to drag you all around if you don't want to. If you want to, you're very welcome to come. Uh, we're happy to join you. Awesome. Savage, do you know where there's a bow you're near here? Um, or someone who would just sell a long bow and arrows? I believe we had found a Fletcher. Um, you got to help me find it in the marking on the legend, though. Sure. Looks. I think. Uh, you know what? I think it was Rioter's weaponry. Bundar, Rukar, and what's the offer? Oh. Yep. Uh, do you wish to ask him? Who the guy we're with right now? Yeah. Aldir. Sure, why not? Aldir, do you have a longbow and arrows for sale by chance? Uh, no. No, I don't. However, um... I do know of one shop. Sometimes he carries some magical stuff as well. Um, if you look for Riotour's Weaponry, um, the uh, what is that? The man who runs it, uh, Zarendar Riotar. He's uh, he's well known. He's been around for for quite some time. He's, Thank uh, you. He might have what you're looking for. That is T18. Uh, he will give you directions. Uh, he will tell you. Yeah, it is right up. Uh, uh, water at the end of... If you take a left at the end of the Way of the Dragons. Uh, right before it turns into Waterdeep Way. Uh, you'll find him on the left-hand side. Thank you. Uh, that will, that interaction probably took about, uh, 20 minutes or so, and to get from there, actually, he's going to tell you to go straight up to, uh, Belmimbra Street, um, onto Snail Street, and just go north until it curves right, and then just follow that until you go left. That's going to take you probably about... 45 minutes. So it's going to put you close to about 3 p.m. Oh, uh, no, 2.30. Th about 2.30. Oh, that's still wrong. 2. Thank you till about 2 p.m. Got it. Oh. Go ahead, sorry. So Relira is probably, since she's been here a couple times for the uh, festival before, She's probably knows this area a little better than most. Is Relira back or is she still indisposed? I'm sorry, I'm I'm here, so I know this area better than most. Um and like the rest of the group, yeah. The group, yeah. Okay. I'm not sure what to do with that information. So basically you can lead them to uh cuz yeah. cuz he gave them street names and other than, I mean, Cougar's been uh, to the surface, but he hasn't really left the, the Yawning Portal. You've actually traversed the city a couple times, so you, you know the, the streets a little bit better. So Relira can lead you there um, as you enter. Uh, behind the counter is a... <coughs> excuse me. A, uh, about a, a middle-aged uh, human man. Hello! 
Welcome to uh, Riatari, Riatar's Weapons. How may I be of service? Yes, sir. My name is Thoros, and I seek a longbow and three corals of arrows. Hmm. Yes. One pain. Very well. Uh, as you make your way through the shop um, and ask for this, uh, you notice that the shelves are overstocked. Um, this place looks like a a pawn shop with no organization. Ah, yes, I, I think I might have some of those. Um, he leads you over to uh, one shelf. He's like, ah, here's a... Uh, well, we keep the ammunition behind the counter, of course. Don't want to have the... Uh, somebody come in and grab weapons off the shelf and shoot me, of course. Uh, but here's your, your, uh, your bows. Um, they have... They're all secondhand, of course, but they are in very good shape. I have made sure of this myself. I, I, I don't buy them if, uh, you know, I think they're going to break soon. Fair point. I'm looking for a longbow. What have you got? Uh, he says, well, and he leads you over to a shelf. Uh, this one here. Uh, hmm. It, I, I take it it's for you, yes? It's for me. It's functional. It's not fancy. All right. All right. Uh, well, then you're going to want this big one here. And you, you see one that's about uh, probably a good seven feet. This one here is, uh, is, is rather well done. Um, definitely not going to break anytime soon. Uh, it was sold to me by a, uh, a, an elf uh, out of the, I believe it was a woods elf. Uh, they said they've used it very well, but they had been doing a little adventuring and came across something a little bit better. So he wanted to sell me his, his older one. Uh, mm. DM to player, are you looking for like a plus one or a regular? Just regular. Ah, yes. So this, this one is, uh, very well made. Um, I believe it was made actually by the wood elves. Uh, I don't know if he made it perchance, but please, uh, pick it up. Uh, give it a draw. Just don't dry fire it. You don't want to wreck it. How much would you like for this bow? Um, I mean, it's uh, definitely decent workmanship, but nothing, you know, spectacular. Um, say 45 gold. And it does seem used, and I see a nick here. Do you think you might be able to go 40? Persuasion at disadvantage. I am sorry, but I did only I paid thirty for it, so you know I'm I'm not even doubling my money here. Fair enough, forty five it is. And how much for three corals of arrows? Um. Well, uh, he takes you back to the counter and he goes behind it. Well, here we've got uh, these ones are wonderful. These are uh, made of mithril. These are quite expensive, but they are worth yeah, it. Yeah. Simple. I need something to poke a hole in somebody. That's it. Oh, very well, very well. Um, these ones were made by a uh, a human smithy. Um, as you can see, that uh, they'll be good for one or two uses each before they're um, no no good anymore. Um, so about three gold per quiver. I'll take four quivers, and you have a um, oh player to DM. What am I thinking of? It's a uh, quiver. Oh God, I couldn't think of it. Um, bottomless quiver or uh, something like that. No, no, just a plain quiver. Oh well, yeah, they they come with quivers. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I can work with that. And I am good here. Do y'all need anything? I need more ale. Kugra is uh definitely stumbling. 
And he's smacking his lips like he's uh, parched. Well, we've got one more stop, Kugrill. We can probably get you some ale on the way if you'd like. Oh, he kind of like throws his one arm up, like, yeah, cheering. Relira or, um, or Junto? Anything from this shop? Um, I think not for me, just because I don't really know what. I would need, or what would be there, or I think, I don't know. Arrow. Do I need... Oh, I, I need some arrows. Regular arrows? Oh. Sure, plus one arrows. Hmm, plus one arrows. Um, plus one arrows, I believe, are a gold apiece. How many would you like? How much is it for regular arrows? Uh, it was three gold for a quiver. Uh, a quiver has 20. Uh, I will get 45 plus one arrows and what a quiver, two quivers of regular arrows. Ah, see, somebody is planning on doing some adventuring soon, hmm? or maybe some uh, some hunting and you're a bad shot. <laughs> it's always good to be prepared. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. Uh, very well. Uh, sorry, it was... How many quivers regular arrows? You. Okay, so that is 51 gold, please. And he, he pulls out these, uh, these small arrows, and you can see that the, the shafts are made of steel, um, as well as the arrowheads. Um, they are all one piece. And you also see the uh, the feathers are, are pretty much brand new. You think these are going to fly very well. Marvelous. I'll get another one of these as well. Here's your coin. Another one of what? The um, quiver. Oh. Oh, of, uh, of regular arrows? That's the ones that you said looked really nice? No, those are the plus ones. Well, just stick with what I've got, I think. All right, so how you're going to do this is you are going to put, go to the compendium and put in arrow. Julian already did it. Or, uh, Thoros is helping me gather my arrows. But not Thoros. Junto, Junto helped me gather my arrows. Oh, he, he's put them into your uh, your inventory for you? Yes. And they are marked as resources? Yes. Beauty. Uh, you actually already have... You have a lot more arrows than what you've got listed there. Oh, okay, I see it. All right, perfect. Oh, well, a pleasure doing business. If I can help you out with anything else, please always come back. And what's this fellow's name? Just taking notes. Uh, Zarandar Ryatar. I will put it Thanks. in chat.
Got it. So, where else would y'all like to go? The only last place I have is I'd like to get a, a kit to work on jewelry in the field if it's possible if such a thing exists. Uh, you already have one, do you not? Oh, do I come with one? Uh, I think you should have. Part of your background, wasn't it? It was. Uh, so you've got proficiency with jeweler's tools. Uh... I can just drop in if you're okay with it. There you go. Got it. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. So just go good. Exit the shop. Cougar goes, Morel! And as he does so, kind of stumbles forward and just face plants. He starts to snore. Shall we take him back? Yeah. And I just want to point out, Savage, this is this is me being a decent soul. He's an NPC and I'm not rolling him right now. <laughs> I'm not rolling him, Jesus Christ! What are you doing? You picking him up? You carrying him? Yeah, I'll pick him up and throw him over his shoulder and carry him. Alright. And where are you guys heading? Y'all want to head for the inn, or is there anything you need to do in town, or...? The inn sounds good to to me. What do you think, Jinko? Are you looking for a place to rest and recover this evening? I'm looking for a place to rest and recover for some time. All right. You guys make your way back towards uh, the yawning portal. And as you do, several times, uh, a guard stops you all. Uh, excuse me. I ask what you're doing with that man, is, or that tour guard. Is he still alive? He's alive. He's just drunk. We're taking him home to put him to bed. Nothing unusual. Drunken dwarf. Very well. Just, uh, you know. Hopefully he doesn't throw up on your back on the way. Yeah, I'm hoping to. I had a friend that had the prestidigitation cantrip memorized, but I haven't seen him in an age. Fair enough. He kind of chuckles. And, uh, I hope I don't see you causing trouble. Oh, that's yes, we're law-abiding citizens. Hmm. He, he looks a little suspicious, but very well. Carry on. And this happens a couple more times along the way. Um, but you guys are able to make it back to the Yawning Portal. And so, do, have we arrived at the place where we're staying? You sure have. And what's it, the setup? Where are we? Uh, the Yawning Portal. This is a place... Uh, you wouldn't know. Um, it, it's kind of legendary throughout Waterdeep. So your your couple stays here. Like this is where you uh, you guys met Thoros and Kudra. Okay. Um, is it? Is there a way for me to have a sense of how safe it is for me to take out my pouch? Um, it is not something you probably want to do on a table. Okay. In the middle of here, but there are rooms. Um, which, since you guys were here, I'd say you probably already have a room. Okay. So, what do I do? Yeah. 
We can get rooms. Everyone can freshen up for dinner if they want, or we can just call it a night. Uh, it, it, it is about like 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, nice afternoon nap. Why don't we all... Uh, I think I'll retire to my room to, to rest and clean up. Why don't we all come back together around, you know, 6 this evening in the pub? Dinner's on me, if you'll allow it. With gusto. Sure. Um, you take Cougar up to his room and lay him in bed, and as he slams into the bed, he kind of gives a snort, and you can see he's like kind of like half-assed dreaming, and he's mumbling something in his sleep. Uh, copper cutter. Copper cutter. I'll take his boots off, put him on his side, and put a trash can by the bed. Just in time, leave. too. As you place the 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 um the bucket beside him, and you start to turn towards the door, you hear <laughs> half of it gets into the garbage can. I'm not cleaning that up. What? I'm not cleaning that up. <laughs> Uh, but, but you leave, and, uh, you know, he doesn't seem to be choking on it. He seems all right. Um, and what are you doing? You heading to your room? Yeah, I'm going to head to my room and, and try and make some jewelry. Take a gold coin and see if I can turn it into a ring. Oh, okay. Or something. So this will take you probably a few hours. Okay. Um, you pull out your, your little tiny smelting pot and uh, you pull out a little block that is filled with sand, packed very tightly. And you kind of um, carve out a little spot, um, a, a little uh, ring shape in this. And as you wait a few minutes for it to, to smelt and melt down, you then begin to pour it into this ring shape. Um, wow, this song is fucking me up. Hold on. Um, you then uh, you then place the um, the top piece on it and slide it into place very carefully. I want you to give me a jeweler's tool check with uh, dexterity as the um, query. You pull out this small metal ring about an hour and a half later after it's cooled. It is very jagged, and in fact, the sand was not packed quite tight enough. So as you pull this out, you can see this thing's got a long prong on it, and the ring itself is extremely um, thin. Got it. I'll just throw it back into my bag of holding, and I'll melt it down and try it again later. Very well. And uh, how about you, Junto? What are you doing? We're... Is this after our rooms? No, this is while, like once you get back to your rooms. Um, I'm just gonna kind of place my stuff down, uh, straighten up a little bit, clean my fur. All right. Bye. Give me a Constitution save. You feel that there's a hairball brewing, but uh, it's not ready yet. Really? Yeah, just... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I'll just sit there annoyed with an itch at the back of my throat. Ralira, what are you doing?
clean up, I unpack my things, and in the process of unpacking, I look to see the bag of coin. You counting it? I'm counting it. I want everybody to roll me two D100s. Damn. So we have one hundred and four gold. We have eighty two silver. And 144 platinum. Who dares wins? Do you know how to add that to your sheet, Ralira? Hello? Yeah, she just finished. Okay. And as you guys settle in to just uh, give yourselves a little bit of a short rest and to relax, clean up, and for one of you to count your money, that is where we're going to end for today. Just give me a moment to outro the stream, and I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> and my fucking camera screwed up again. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? What is happening with this today? Alright. I don't know how long that was screwed up, but great. Now it's back. Uh thank you everybody for coming to join me. Uh Bumper Cat and Knight of Ice for popping in chat. And uh, Knight of Ice, thank you for the resub. Uh, I also appreciate the uh, new follow, Betty Murphy110. Thank you for joining us. Um, so, you guys are aware, um, I believe I have Wild Mount tomorrow. Um, so, we might have another DD game tomorrow night. Monday, we're running, I think, Halo with our, our Monday group that I run games with. Uh, we also have uh, next week, uh, we are actually doing this game. Three weekends in a row. I believe we've got everybody um, back for next session. So we have uh, two more Saturdays of, of this uh, before we go back to our regular bi-weekly schedule. Um, hopefully we'll see you guys here. I'm streaming uh, normally Friday, uh, 8 p.m. Saturday at uh, 1.30 p.m. Uh, Sunday, 7.30 p.m. And Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern time, all the time. So hopefully we will see you here for that. Um, hope to see you all come back. And remember, everybody. Oop. Be savage, go home. Peace.